Welcome to the Abolitionist Roundtable with your hosts, Del, Phil, and Janice. Come on in and take a seat. You're invited to join the roundtable. Call 734-822-1600 to get into the conversation. And now, your hosts, Del Marsh, Phil Stargell, and Janice Daniels. And good morning. This is Phil Stargell of the Abolitionist Roundtable of Michigan. And we are in the Wham Studio in the great voice <laughs> of Michigan, of, uh, of Ann Arbor. And we have, across from me is uh, former mayor of Troy, Janice Daniels. And to the left is Dale Marsh. And, to the uh, opposite of right. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the opposite of right. <laughs> and uh, we, first of all, we'd like to say... Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody if we don't get a chance to see you, and a Happy New Year if we don't see you before the New Year. And uh, But uh, it is uh, appropriate that uh, the last show of the year, or the, or the second, second to last show of the year, is uh, get a little sprinkling of uh, snow. So uh, the holiday season is here. The Christmas season is here on us. And we do have... Just a little bit of snow. But um, today we uh, are going to uh, have a very special guest that will come on sometime in the, in, the, in the next hour, depending on uh, how this, uh, we, we present this show to you today. Uh, I have a script and I have a show that I've already p- uh, planned out. But uh, the caliber of the guest is such a great person that, in my eyesight, because he used to be my f- uh, congressman, and uh, it, it, they made a switch and and he saddled me, my representative as uh, John Conyers, and boy, I, I did not sit, that did not sit well with me. But uh, but later on in the in the hour, we're going to have a former congressman and I. Don't like to use former, but uh, Congressman Terry Benavolio will uh, cr- come on and uh, give us a few words about uh, maybe about where his plans are for the future. I don't know, but uh, we'll see. It'll be good to hear from him. That's yes, for it sure. will. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll be getting to that in a few minutes. But in the meantime, I want to look at this. <laughs> this budget deal. And f- first of all, um, it might be better to just uh, say uh, good morning and uh, sign in uh, with uh, Mayor Daniels, first of all, and uh, happy, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, America, and Merry Christmas to you. Good morning, Dell and... Um, he, Dell's working on a, a computer project for us right at this moment, <laughs> yeah. so he hasn't got a microphone in front of him. But he's here with us, and we're glad to see him. Uh, yeah, this uh, I, I call this bill uh, the Omni Obama Bus Bill. Yes, uh, because it is everything that Obama wants, and it is also another one of the Pelosi type bills where it was voted on before it was read. Yes, and that is such a slap in the face of every American citizen that people who we elect into high office should vote in favor of bills that they have not, cannot, will not read. And then afterwards, they start saying, oh, I'm so disappointed. This came out of nowhere, completely out of nowhere, says uh, Jim Jordan. Uh, It's it's incomprehensible that these men and women can do this to the people of the United States of America. Jeff Sessions has said that the bill gives 70,000 green cards to Muslims in the next year alone. Even though 8 out of 10 American voters want the level of immigration in America frozen or at least cut. Uh, Sessions said the voters are in open rebellion. I don't, I don't see it. Where are we rebelling? I don't see that we're doing anything to stop this administration from these illegal and unconstitutional actions. Oh, wait a 
uh, uh, the 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 thing that I was uh, so angry about it because you you know that what they did was they put the immigration uh, bill that that there had been some uh, if they didn't threaten to veto it any time you single out uh Islamists or Muslims you know they tell you that that's because you hate them or you are you are a religious bigot and things like that but they put that bill in there right they right they put that, that in there and 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 the thing about it is it allows for the them to quadruple the number of foreign workers allowed into the country annually from 66,000 to 264,000. Well, you know what? There's truly no way that we can really know what is in this bill. No. 2,009 pages of legalese. <laughs> there is no way. We yeah. can be picking and choosing and talking and discussing things till we're blue in the face exactly. for the next 25 years. Exactly. And they'll be making amendments to this thing for the next 100 years. But the, but the, but the, the thing about it is, if you look at... Um, what I looked up, and it, and it, what I was trying to find out was, was there anybody that could uh, uh, give you an idea of how many people over the years have gone, uh, what you call AWOL or overstairs? Is oh what yeah, the they people that them. are missing on these H HB one visas? visas. Yeah, yeah, they I, don't have any idea. Yeah, it, 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 this is what it says. Nobody is sure how many people are in the U.S. on expired visas. Right. I mean, that's insanity. That is insanity. And then on the opposite hand, to be inviting more in. Four times the, uh, uh, yeah. the number that they already have allowed in. It's just, in, it's just incredible. That, uh, but, but as I said, when, uh, when Trump called for a moratorium, which he called for it, you know, he said he didn't say a ban or anything like that. He said he going to stop. He wants to stop immigration from certain areas. Now, what did they do? They turned around and said he's going to ban Muslims, Islamists from the country. That's what they said. Tried to make him out to be somebody that wants to single people out just because of their religion. And that's not the case. The case is the word that should be used is moratorium. We need to stop this until, like he said, we can get a handle on just who the heck is here right. and who isn't. Well, you know what I find so fascinating about Donald Trump is um, having been on the radio, having been in meetings, having been at the legislative table, uh, having been on a television program. I was on, uh, what, what's that program called with Charlie Langton? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Let It Rip. Let It Rip. Yeah, yeah, I was on that program once or, or twice um, as well. And, and what I find is in every venue where we're talking in front of a group, we're in a structured setting, we, of course, we're careful with our language, uh, we're careful with our ideas that we express, um, and we're measured. But then as soon as the microphone is off, or the meeting ends, or the television cameras go off, everybody becomes themselves. Mm -hmm. And you start talking naturally, and you throw out little comments here and there. Donald Trump does that natural bit even on television. Yeah. So he, to me, he is just the natural. natural. Yes, yes, he is. Natural. Now, he, uh, am I correct when, when uh, Barbara Walters just recently came out with her most fascinating pro, uh, person of the year? Did not B Barack Obama win that 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 uh, that title? I can't imagine that he wouldn't have based yeah, upon I'm the liberal obsession with him. They, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the Chris Matthews? Uh, uh, when he was asked the question, how's that leg doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, I yeah. like that. How's that leg doing? Well, what leg? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that leg that you got to tingle up when you... Tingle so, up your spine. Oh, so Obama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's his answer? <laughs> the snide, nasty person that he is. <laughs> but then uh, the thing is that, that uh, Baba Wawa, she, <laughs> she ends up uh, making... Uh, uh, 
Bruce Jenner the most fascinating person, but I, I and, and I think Trump was the runner up, wasn't he? I wasn't paying attention. She's but that the just last shows person you on my how, radar, to how, be honest with you. Yeah, they they are so uh, disturbed at the fact that that Donald Trump, regardless of what <laughs> what he does, they can't get him to, yeah. get his poll numbers to go downward, well, and that know, is the, just irritating everybody in uh, in the news media. It's amazing watching the presidential debate. I I I loved some of the. The, the the clips that he says, I mean, he's he, he was very measured, I thought, in this debate. And he said, I'm not talking about isolationism or religion. I'm talking about security. Yes. And, and so he, he really does boil the argument down into a couple of very understandable words. And I think that's why well, that's, he is so impressive to so many people. That's the essence of... Uh of being able to 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 get right to the people. Yep. That's that's the trait that uh, Ronald Reagan had, and you know we talk about Ronald Reagan quite a bit, uh, but th- he had that ability to to reach you to ma- make you believe that he was speaking directly to you. Yes, exactly. And, and Trump has it, uh, and and it just irritates every major I news know. person <laughs> in the country. You yeah. know, so. All I the, love it. All the plastic people, they just yeah. can't stand and, the and natural look what they've done nature to, uh, of poor, Donald Trump. Poor, uh, ben Carson. Oh, it's just terrible. You know, I, I uh, the the you know, for whatever it is worth, you know, I don't uh, I don't c- c- uh, think that I should uh, stand up and say anything, uh, uh, endorse anybody, you know, because of the fact that. However meager, you know, we do have a voice. We have a microphone, right? So it wouldn't be appropriate for me, I believe, to uh, to say, "Well, I, I'm, this is my favorite." I had a favorite in the race, and uh, I tried to uh, not to uh, push it out, you know, over the mic. But but uh, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, being more and more impressed by every day by by Trump, simply for the fact that. That uh, I mean, some of the things that he said, I've been advocating for for years. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, Phil, I I feel kind of almost the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. By virtue of the fact that we have this microphone, mm-hmm. I think that we are um, obligated, obligated yeah. to give the people our opinion, yeah. and that's all it is. Well, it's not yeah, like we're we, yeah. we're saying, yeah. oh, you've got to follow me, or I know that you have to do this. Mm-hmm. 